down. And look at it go. He could go all the way. Touchdown. 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 The Bills make me want to shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. Come on now. The Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now. Come on and shout. What's up, Bills fans? Welcome back to the Buffalo Fanatics podcast. I am your host, Fern Bannatine. And it's a very exciting time of the year, very exciting day. Uh, I re- I'm recording this on the Wednesday, but by the time this podcast is released, training camp has finally started. It starts at 9.45 Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, July 25th at St. John Fisher College. Uh, the Bills have quite a few exciting fan events going on. Uh, throughout the next few weeks and for a fan who doesn't live in Buffalo it's an exciting time for me as well just to finally see football back and see the players back on the field and track some guys especially the young guys that might start showing some potential of course there's a lot of position battles this year in particular on the offensive line and I think at the cornerback position we're fairly deep and training camp is where it all starts to get settled and of course it means the preseason and then the regular season is right around the corner August tends to fly by, so the season is uh, just over a month away now, so a lot to be excited about. And since I'm recording this just before training camp begins, I thought it'd be one last chance to play another little fun game. I'm going to go over some training camp superlatives uh, for Buffalo Bills players. I have a bunch of categories lined up. I'm going to give you the category, and then I'm going to give you the player or players that I think will meet this category. So the categories that I came up with this for this particular show, first of all, we're going to talk about the biggest spotlight. That is the player that has the biggest spotlight on him going into training camp. This one probably is fairly obvious. Uh, we're going to talk about a breakout player. Uh, we're going to talk about a player with the most to prove in training camp. And we're going to go over a few players who are in danger of getting cut, uh, some more surprise cuts than anything. I want to talk about a player who I think's Probably the most underrated Bills player going into the 2019 training camp. And finally, I want to talk about a few sleeper picks to actually make this team a bottom of the roster type guys who might actually have a chance to sneak on the back of this roster for 2019. So to get the show started, again, we're going to start with the biggest spotlight. Uh, This one is pretty simple to me. It's got to be Josh Allen, our second year quarterback. Uh, we've talked quite a bit on this podcast about uh, Allen's first year, Allen's development throughout his first year. Uh, certainly is still a lot of weaknesses and holes in his games that he's going to have to fix. For all the flashes of brilliance he showed last year, there were definitely quite a few boneheaded plays as well. And his inaccuracy in particular in the short passing game is something that's probably going to have to be fixed if we want him to be a franchise quarterback. He's never going to have to be perfect, but he's going to have to be better than he was in his rookie season. And all of this is going to have to start in training camp. We're going to get one of our first looks with Josh Allen uh, with his new receiving weapons and John Brown, Cole Beasley, uh, Tyler Croft at tight end. Uh, We have the new look offensive line and whatever it ends up shaping up to be, it's almost definitely going to be better than last year's offensive line. That should help Allen quite a bit in his development. Uh, We've already heard some good reports specifically from LaShawn McCoy who commented that Josh Allen looks a lot more confident out there. We've heard a lot of good reports uh, in OTAs. We heard uh, quite a few good reports, but it's time for us fans to see it with our own eyes and make our own assessments. And that's going to happen over the next few weeks. Of course, it's a bit of a bit of a catch twenty two situation in training camp, where if he has success, um, we still have to limit our expectations a little bit because it is only training camp. He's not really facing real defensive looks and pressures. So we do have to temper our excitement a little bit. Of course, on the other side of things, if he does struggle, well, we can say the exact same thing, that it's not a, not a real game situation yet. Uh, it's still early in the preseason. There's a lot of steps to go in the process to get to the regular season. So the catch is, even, if, even though we hope that he looks great in training camp, if he does, we have to kind of limit what we gauge from it. And if he doesn't, well, there's certainly uh, no, no reason to panic or no real cause for concern just yet. So whatever happens, whether it's good or bad, we have our excuses built up on either side to kind of limit actually what what we see and what we can gauge from training camp. Uh, But all things considered, uh, I think most fans would probably agree that Josh Allen's the guy we're going to be watching most closely. I'm sure the media scrutiny uh, will be following Josh Allen during training camp as well. 
And I, for one, will certainly be watching every throw, every play, and I cautiously anticipate that uh, we're going to see some steady improvement uh, from Josh Allen in going into his second season here. All right, I'm going to move in on to the next category, and the next category I have here is the breakout player during training camp. This one, the first guy that came to my mind, and I'm going to stick with him, and I've talked quite a bit about him potentially being a breakout player during his second season, that's Tremaine Edmonds. And I think this is another pick that a lot of fans will likely agree with. We started to see some real dominant flashes during the, that sec, the last few games of the season in particular, but that most of the second half of the season, he really played a, at a higher level, of course, uh, during the first half when uh, he didn't really have the, his position and his instincts down, down pat just yet. Uh, with Evans, you have just such a unique player with his length, with his athleticism. He's got great, great closing speed. Uh, he's got those lanky arms that he can get his hands on balls and bat them down in the middle of the field. It's just a very unique, uh, dynamic player. There's not many players with his body type at his position in the league. He's still a very young player. He's still only 21 years old. And I'm very excited. This is the guy that I really think is going to break out and uh, really establish himself as a dominant up-and-coming middle linebacker uh, during training camp and then heading into, heading into the regular season. Outside of Josh Allen, I don't think there's a player I'm more excited to see than Tremaine Emmons just because I really do think that he is going to break out. Whereas Allen, I'm cautiously optimistic. I, I, I feel fairly confident that I'm gonna, we're going to see a really exciting Tremaine Emmons going into the second season. Okay, we're going to move on to the player with most to prove during training camp. Uh, there's a few guys that came to mind here for me. Uh, personally, one guy that comes to mind, a guy that I, I still want to see improve quite a bit, even though he did during his second season, is Zay Jones. I know he really established himself as a bit of a red, red zone threat down the stretch last year, but I still want to see a little more. I want to see more of an attacking physical style from him. But, you know, he he was good enough last year, so that's not the player that I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose Deion Dawkins, uh, another guy who wasn't necessarily terrible last year, but he didn't have as good a year as he did in his first season. Uh, I think the penalties were a bit of a problem. Uh, he didn't get off to the best start during the season. Uh, and then during the off season, uh, some of his comments were a, a bit alarming to me. It was when he mentioned that he, he did get a little complacent during that second season, and he's vowed that he would not do that again. Uh, now, I think it's just Dawkins being uh, extremely raw and honest with his assessment of his own play. Uh, it's not something you expect or really like to hear from a player, but I think he's just that kind of guy that he's, he's really... A, a really down-to-earth guy from all accounts, and he's going to be honest uh, in the media and on social media. So there's probably not much to read into it, but it, it, I guess it's just a little alarming to think that a, an NFL-caliber player is not giving it his all and putting out full effort uh, during every play during the regular season. Now with Dawkins, there's a, a lot of, uh, I wouldn't want to call them excuses, but there, there's a lot of reasons that may explain why he did struggle a little last year. Of course, the retirements of Eric Wood, and the loss of Richie Incognito during the offseason. Those were two real centerpieces of the offensive line. Of course, Richie Incognito was playing left guard right beside Dawkins. So he had a new player to his right, Vlad Dukas, at first, who struggled quite a bit, and Wyatt Teller came in. I think Dawkins picked up his play when Teller did come in, and during that second half of the season when the whole offense really picked up its game. Uh, but aside from those reasons, I think we really, we really have to see the product transfer on the field here. And I think Dawkins has a lot to prove to show that he's going to go out there and play hard every play and really come back from last year's struggles. Now, there should be a much better situation at left guard beside Dawkins, uh, whether it's Quinton Spain, uh, veteran Spencer Long, or if it is Wyatt Teller coming back in his second year. If he does win the starting gig, it would have means he would have beat out a few veterans for that position, so that would be a good omen. So let's see what happens with Deion Dawkins here. I'm certainly rooting for him. Um, he's a really great guy from all accounts I've heard. He definitely seems like a really uh, down-to-earth kind of guy, so let's hope that he bounces back. So the next uh, superlative category that I want to discuss are some surprise players who might be on the chopping block. I have a list of players, a very short list of players, that may be in danger of getting cut if they uh, don't show the chops during training camp. Of course, we brought in a lot of competition at different positions, so this list may be a little reflective of some of the positions where we have a little more depth on the roster than we've had in the past. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to talk about who I did not choose for this list, and that's uh, LaShawn McCoy. I know there's been some speculation out there that McCoy may be a veteran who does get cut. 
uh, just given that we brought in Devin Singletary in the draft. We signed the Frank Gore. McCoy obviously had a pretty down year last year. There's the salary cap implications where he's a $6 million, above $6 million salary cap hit. But the reason I'm hesitant to include him on this list is Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott have both reiterated their commitment to LaShawn McCoy. Only, I think, last week or only a few days ago, Brandon Bean once again spoke about how McCoy is part of this team, how he believes he can still play in this league, and I believe he still can play as well. I think there were a lot of factors that led into his down year last year. He had multiple injuries throughout the year. He had a new offensive line that was really struggling. Uh, The passing game was struggling as well. And I've talked quite a bit on these previous podcasts about how McCoy is really an ideal bounce-back candidate. And I believe the front office and the coaching staff thinks that as well. Uh, But I guess we'll know as training camp starts if that's the case, if McCoy is showing some of his old juice. Uh, But I believe that's going to be the case. And I believe the front office and the coaching staff, uh, they've been honest with us uh, throughout their history here. And I I believe if LaShawn McCoy can still play, and I do believe he can still play, then I think he stays on this team for another year at least. Uh, But for a few guys who I think would be candidates as uh, surprise cuts, um, I'll start with uh, two cornerbacks, uh, EJ Gaines and Kevin Johnson. Of course, both of them signed one-year contracts in the offseason to come join the team. Both of them, well, at least Gaines has had some pretty decent success. Uh, Kevin Johnson has had his ups and downs, but he was a first-round draft pick, uh, had a pretty good college career. Of course, E.J. Gaines is coming back for his second stint with the Buffalo Bills. He was with us in 2017, Sean McDermott's first year as head coach, and he was a difference maker in that defense. He had a lot of big turnovers. Uh, He really fit the cover two zone scheme that McDermott and Leslie Frazier run. Uh, But his Achilles heel, and uh, might even be a bit of a pun, has always been the injuries. And again, last year, he joined the Cleveland Browns, and he suffered another injury, uh, missed most of his time there with concussion issues. Uh, So he comes in here to Buffalo on a one-year prove-it deal. He's had quite a few of these one-year prove-it deals throughout his career, mostly just because he can stay healthy. And so I just think, even though he is a good fit for the system, and he's had success here before, He's a guy that I think could be a surprise cut just because uh, those injuries always seem to keep creep back on him. And it's much the same story for Kevin Johnson. Of course, he was a first-round draft pick of the Houston Texans a few years back. He's actually only made 19 appearances in the last three years. Uh, but there's some expectations for him coming in here, and clearly that number two cornerback spot is sort of up for grabs. Even though I'm a huge fan of Levi Wallace, uh, he's, he's still very unproven at this point in his career. Uh, so I think the pendulum can swing either way on either of these guys. Both Gaines and Johnson can wind up being your starting second corner for the Bills, or they could end up getting cut before the season starts. Now, I will say that uh, it's probably unlikely that both of those players get cut just because um, we would start lacking cornerback depth, of course, unless injuries kind of take over. Uh, but I'll also mention that both of their contracts are structured in a way uh, so that it wouldn't be much of a dead cap for either of those two players to get cut either. Johnson would be a $400,000 cap hit, whereas Gaines would be a $250,000 cap hit. Also interesting to note that going into the season, Johnson counts for $2.7 million against the cap, whereas EJ Gaines counts for $1.8 million. So if it does come down to a decision both between cutting one of those two players, uh, well, that would be a consideration, the $1.1 million savings you have with Gaines. And I'll also mention that Gaines is the kind of guy that uh, I'm rooting for just because we saw the success that he had in the system before. It's been really unfortunate that he's had such a string of injuries in his career. And we know he can be a difference maker in this defense. So I certainly wouldn't want him to get cut, but I think there's a definite possibility just because of his injury history. Now, another guy I wanted to mention that would probably be a bit of a surprise cut, uh, that would be offensive guard Wyatt Teller. Uh, Teller is only going into his second season after being a fifth-round draft pick out of Virginia Tech when our offensive line was struggling quite a bit uh, mid-season. The Bills coaching staff made the change to put play Teller out there at left guard, and Teller actually held his own during those last seven games of the season, which he started every single one. He had a pretty nice pass-blocking grade, but a pretty poor run-blocking grade, according to Pro Football Focus. Uh, That's often to be expected with young linemen who just don't have the strength yet behind them. 
but I think as a rookie, he came in here and he showed flashes that he could be a, a potential decent starter in the at the NFL level. With Teller, you do have to wonder uh, what the coaching staff and what the front office thinks of him. Uh, they've brought in quite a few interior offensive linemen in the off season. Now that could mean many things, and there's probably a variety of reasons for that. But it could also mean that uh, the coaching staff in front office is not as sold on Teller as we may believe they are. If I recall, uh, late in the game last year, I think it was against the Patriots. Uh, Teller was benched for a few series during the game for Ike Boker. Uh, Coach McDermott had made a comment after that game about how Teller has to be a little more consistent with his technique. So it seems like the feeling with the coaching staff is that even though Teller started a few games down the stretch, uh, he still has to continue to progress if he wants to be a starter in this league and for the Bills. And uh, with all the competition they brought in, I would not be surprised at all if he does end up being a cut. Uh, He would be a practice squad candidate if he did get cut, uh, but he'd probably also be a candidate to get poached off that practice squad, given that he does have starting experience and there's such a scarcity of offensive linemen in this league. Now, moving on to the most underrated player going into training camp. And this is a guy who I just don't think is talked of enough. He's certainly talked about amongst Buffalo Fanatics staff members. Uh, We all love this guy, or most of us do. And that's Teron Johnson, our second-year cornerback who's been manning the slot position. He's a guy that came in as a rookie and exceeded all expectations, really, as a fourth-round draft pick. He actually went out in training camp and preseason last year and won that starting slot position. Then in the first half of the year, he was actually one of the better slot cornerbacks in the league, and he ranked extremely highly on pro football focus, who continuously raved about him throughout that first half of the year. And really, they were heralding him at the time as an underappreciated player. And that's what I'm still doing uh, just less than a year later. And gosh, it's funny. If I think back to last preseason, <laughs> um, in his first, he got a lot of action in his, the first two preseason games, if I recall, as an outside corner. And I had my reservations. Uh, He had missed a few tackles. He looked like he wanted to get physical, but just over-pursued a few plays. Uh, But he really turned that around when he got into the starting starting role in the slot. And he really showed a great run-stopping ability as well as good coverage ability. Uh, He had that one kind of trademark play early in the season against Tennessee when he had a pretty big interception, a highlight reel interception, diving across the middle of the field. And he's just a a guy I wanted to highlight here because I don't think that he's talked about enough. Uh, Maybe it's because he plays a slot corner position, but that position is becoming ever more important. It has been important for a few years now in the NFL, becoming more of a passing league. Uh, Maybe it's because the cornerback position, you you don't hear too much about cornerbacks unless they're playing poorly. Uh, Maybe it's because he's a Buffalo Bill and we don't seem to get all the attention that some of the more big media markets players seem to get. But I wanted to highlight him on this show as an unheralded player, a player whose style I love, and I think he's going to be a pretty solid player for us in many years to come as that physical slot cornerback for us. All right, so the last category I have here, uh, I wanted to talk about a few uh, potential sleeper guys that have a chance at making the back end of this roster. Uh, First, I'm going to start with the wide receiver position. Now, there's probably a few uh, locks to make this team at the position Uh, John Brown, Zay Jones, Robert Foster, and Cole Beasley are probably locks to make the position. Then most likely, Andre Roberts is going to make the team just because of his his special team prowess. And that might only need one additional position. I've talked on previous podcasts about uh, Duke Williams maybe being the guy that fills that position just because he has that size that's something a little different than most of the other receivers on the roster have. Uh, But I've changed my tune a little bit. I'm going to go with David Sills as a surprise pick to make make this uh, roster. Of course, he's the wide receiver that went undrafted out of West Virginia. And the Bills signed him as a priority undrafted free agent. And one of the reasons that I'm changing my tune, uh, if any of you have seen the second season of the uh, Embedded series, uh, the second episode profiles the Buffalo Bills preparing for the 2019 draft. And you hear the scouts talking a little bit about David Sills. And then in the third episode, the episode actually starts off with uh, the Bills brass doing a very ambitious recruiting job to get David Sills to sign with Buffalo. Uh, You see that they had Josh Allen and Matt Barkley, who had previous connections with Sills, call him up. You see Sean McDermott call him, Brandon Bean calling him, Terry Pegula gets on the phone with him. They were pretty continuously aggressive in their pursuit of David Sills. And it just tells me that they, they, they might have a role carved out for him. 
Of course, he's going to have to prove it. He's going to have to show to the coaching staff that he belongs in this league, and he's probably going to have to play uh, better than some of those other guys on the back of the roster fighting, fighting for the same spot. But I do think that there might be a little bit of an edge there just because uh, they did show such a great pursuit of him after the draft. So I'm going to pick him as my first sleeper to make the 2019 Buffalo Bills. And now the second guy I will select is uh, even a bit of a deeper sleeper. Um, and it kind of contradicts what I mentioned earlier about our offensive line depth. But I, I still think that Ike Boker has an opportunity, a potential opportunity to make this team as a, a backup interior offensive lineman. Now, I don't know how exactly that's going to look. I don't know how many offensive linemen we're going to keep. And there's going to be some quite fierce competition. Uh, so it is a deep sleeper. But I just think this front office and coaching staff has uh, shown time and time again that this is the guy that they do want to keep around. They kept him on the practice squad last season and they called him up to regular season action. He actually got in some playing time late in the season last year. Importantly, they've been grooming him at both the interior, the guard position and the center position. So you got to have that versatility if you're going to be a backup interior offensive lineman in this league. Now, again, I'll fully admit that it might be a bit of a long shot. It's probably going to take a potential injury uh, with a, one of the other interior offensive linemen. And he might be a candidate for a, another practice squad run to start the year. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I want to mention him here, and I, I wouldn't be totally surprised if Booker found a way to sneak his way uh, onto the back of this 2019 roster. So I think that's going to do it for my 2019 training camp superlatives. But as always, I love your feedback. Let me know what you think of some of these calls. Uh, let you guys all enjoy uh, training camp. I'm sure you're, many of you are as excited as I am to finally get it started. Football is back. The Bills are back. And so until next week, I'm sure we're going to have a lot to talk about next week. Uh, but until then, go Buffalo Bills.